party the midnight summer away with fairies, druids, and all things mystical at the Mattress Factory's 2019 Urban Garden Party, Solstice, on Friday, June 21st. Feast and imbibe with some of the city's best restaurants and bars. Hit the dance floor with music by Beauty Slap, Bad Custer, and DJ Samuel Andres, and bid on one-of-a-kind works at the art auction. Tickets are on sale now at mattress.org. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Welcome to the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky and talk tech, social media, and more with local nerds that use it live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Obviously, I am not sore. I am Butters, but we tonight we are both going to roll with the Microsoft game tag because Mr. Microsoft is out of town. So it's just chilling myself. How are you doing today? I think I missed about half the intro, but that looks like a thing. Yep. So, Sounds good to me. And, and I am also not Sorg. Well, we're being Sorg tonight. We're being Sorg? We're both being Sorg tonight. We should go as ha- for Halloween. We should dress up like Mike. Oh my gosh. Like the different versions, like long-haired Sorg and short-haired Sorg. <laughs> juggler Short, Sorg. Sorg with a hat on. Tech nerd Sorg. This will be fun. Missy, you want to get on this? I carry like a camera around on your shoulder. Yeah, we also, we will have producer Missy on the mic on occasion too tonight, which is pretty darn exciting. They actually remembered to plug me in. We like her. Yay! You plugged yourself in, but oh, that's true. <laughs> but Sorg usually doesn't let me do that. So yes. there's no one here to stop us. Yes. So you can. Uh, I think I talk about things where you can ask your Google Home to play the show on Google Music Podcasts or ask Amazon Echo. Look, I'm going to say all the words because I don't remember not to say them when I do things to play Awesome Cast on TuneIn. Uh, we're here every Tuesday live um, at AwesomeCast.net at 7 p.m. Unless Sorg's delays are starting, I'm reading words for words. And we're also li- we're, we're also up here on the Rivers Edge PGH.com, Saturdays at 9 a.m. Uh, River Talk, awesome thing of the month, is every third Sunday. And then you can also check us out on the 405media.com, weekdays 9 a.m. And Pacific Time and noon Eastern Time. And then you can find us at awesomecast.net or email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. We would be super excited to get an email, so please email us. Or find us on Twitter and Facebook as AwesomeCast. And don't forget to subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, yeah, if you watch us on uh, the Facebooks, we will probably interact with you like we were doing with our new SoundTech Podner. Congratulations on the promotion. I-, I wonder if you ask Google Home to play, can you have it play like the YouTube channel on Ooh. the Chromecast? Uh, now I want to go home and try that. <laughs> and demoted. Yep, partner, you were hired and then demoted. Yeah, so you have to check that out and let us know. And like I said, we're going to be live over on Facebook and feel free to interact with us all you want. It's pretty fun. We also invite people to be part of our studio audience. Hit us up at AwesomeCast at Sorgatron Media and we'll save you a seat. And if you're very nice, maybe a piece of pizza from a sponsor we'll discuss later. Look, I didn't even jump into that yet. All right. Are you ready to do this, Mr. Chilla? I am ready to rock and roll. Sweet. Okay. So I got to do my advertising read in. This is great. I'm doing a great job. I'm complimenting myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> looking for some great advertising options that won't break the bank. Advertise with us. For more details on advertising, contact us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. And uh, do we do our Patreon shout outs now, Missy? Yes. Perfect. All right, our coffee club, $5 level, Matt Weller, John DeGore, and Diggy John, DeGore. John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen, and fan of the show. I'm just, it's so funny because I keep forgetting to switch the camera back, so it's been a lot of chilla cam. <laughs> and then fan of the show at the dollar level is Mike Fedor Show. And then uh, you want to join our Patreon? It's patreon.com slash, ooh, awesome cast, of course. And shout outs. I did the shout outs. Look at this. And, oh, there's a whole giant read and I didn't even do. This is the best show ever. I uh, want to show your support for the show. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get recognition through an on-air shout-out. 
horribly by me on the show each week, plus acknowledgement through our social media accounts. At the $5 Coffee Club level, you're a fan of the show and want to contribute. We'll include your to- Twitter handle in our rundown of show contributors each week, plus access to gold content, which maybe we'll have to record some later. And as much as we love coffee, it holds no flame to our hearts. The love of Slice on Broadway Pizza. For half the price of a slice pie, you get an on-air shout-out and access to premium content through gold and our state of the podcast address at the $10 level. If you sponsor at the $20 executive producer level, you get to tell Missy what to do. That's not true. We'll practically <laughs> give you the keys to the show at Kingdom and at least uh, some street cred to show with listing on show notes. Join at this level for four months. We'll even send you your very own executive producer business cards. That's really cool. Maybe we should do that. Is that isn't that how you're hosting tonight? Didn't yeah, you, give, you gave me twenty bucks. <laughs> twenty dollar level. You could be me. Donate at the twenty dollar level for four months in a row. Maybe you can be me and sit on Sorg's fancy chair and play with his fancy headphones and hit buttons. There's multiple buttons. And I think we should do at the twenty five dollar level. We'll send Dutters to your podcast to host. Want me to host your podcast? Support us at Patreon. <laughs> I do such a wonderful job. All right, so let's get into the awesome things of the week. First of all, we'll pretend since we're all Sorg uh, tonight, uh, he is being able to, he's very excited that he's able to help us set up remotely while completely conducting sweet streaming maneuvers at General Motors. He is likely still live as of this recording on the SAE Collegiate Design Series YouTube channel. So you could be watching Sorg live right now on the YouTubes. But- and, I, and I think he did that all with Team Viewer. Because we were having a conversation in the the chat, so he, I think he used Team Viewer to get in um, and set us all up, get us streaming, and I think we're off to the races on Facebook. That's really cool. I have never used uh, Team Viewer for this particular use, but that's really cool. I've, I've, it's really easy to use. I've always found Team Viewer pretty darn easy. Have to you use. ever Have you ever used um, the Google Chrome Remote Desktop? No, we were just talking about that. So yeah, tell me about that. So I use that at home, and it's. I have a lot of older computers that are just like single task oriented. And sometimes there's, they have crappy network cards or bad network connection. Um, They're just generally slow. So even using something like a windows remote desktop, like it's built into windows or using Mac screen sharing kind of glitches or hangs or crashes. Um, But the Chrome remote desktop works great. You load Chrome up on a machine, install it as a plugin. Um, you just set up a passcode, and you can get in from anywhere. I'm sure, much like everything else Google does, they're watching what I click on. But I'm okay with that because I can easily get into those machines. And I actually have it set up where <clears throat> I can only remote into a couple machines remotely outside of the house, and then I kind of have to jump from one machine to the next, and I can't I can't get to them all remotely. But it, it works really well. There's next to no lag. Um, and it's all based off your Google account. Super cool. And it's free. It's free. It's free. Free. I like free stuff. Who doesn't like free stuff? All right, Chilla. I'm going to throw you right into your awesome thing. So my awesome thing for those of you who are, who are living in a cave, <laughs> not watching tech news or aware of any of the goings on, um, Apple had a number of announcements yesterday. This week is their WWDC or Worldwide Developers Conference. Um, Yesterday, in amongst a bazillion different things from iOS and Mac OS, Watch OS, and the recently announced iPad OS, um, they announced what they call a sidecar. And if you've ever used Duet Display or anything like that, Sidecar is going to enable to use your iPad as a second monitor for your Mac, allowing you to use the pencil or kind of like as a as a, as an actual touch screen for your Mac. Um, it will work both wired and wirelessly. I'm guessing the wireless is Bluetooth based because it says wirelessly up to a distance of 10 meters which is 30 feet. That's so it's pretty, pretty decent. And that's that's kind of the average range of extent of a decent Bluetooth connection. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm guessing they're doing. They also added on some capabilities for developers um, where you will be able to modify the UI for when in use on Sidecar. I think the example they gave was you could take like the color palette and different palettes for 
I don't know if it was Affinity or or what the uh, graphics editor was, um, but they kind of allowed you to move the toolbars around on what would make sense on a touch screen. Um, some of the buttons became bigger. I think they showed it too, where like you could move the pan snap the panels to the left side of the screen or to the top of the screen. Um, I'm a huge user of Duet, even on a Windows device. Mm -hmm. So I like having that second screen experience, whether I'm in a coffee shop, where no matter where I am, I always have both devices. Um, so to me, this makes a ton of sense. Um, also, it'll be, I think, the first foray for many into using an Apple Pencil in conjunction with Mac OS, because now you're going to be able to kind of draw in whatever app or, or on anything you want to. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's really fun. It's really, I was looking at the uh, different apps that you could use with it and just like being able to use so many of the Adobe uh, different things on there and, and sketch. A lot of people just love sketch and what you're able to do with that now. And final cut pro in motion. I, f I feel like the, um, the touch bar and I don't have a touch bar Mac. I don't know if you do. I know Sorg, Sorg and all his fancy, fancy. equipment. He now has one. Um, I feel like they're taking the elements of what they would normally put in touch bar and kind of enabling that in the touch interface. So I'll be interested to see how they do that. I know duet display allows you to simulate touch bar. So you can throw the touch bar at the bottom of your iPad screen underneath the UI, which I thought was pretty cool too. That's awesome. And we've got Pod Podner saying in the chat right now, this sounds great for artists and video and photo editing, which yes. Yeah. I and, so I mark up a lot of documents, mm -hmm. like whether they're network diagrams or anything like that. So that's where I think it'll be even fun for me, like PDF markup and any of that kind of stuff. Um, being able to do it right on, on that second screen, I think it'll work pretty well. That's really cool. Isn't that just the most amazing thing when you're able to just kind of edit in a document, <laughs> yes. like a PDF document, like it's the best. Well, I feel like it's like bringing back the notepad style of like, oh, I'm going to highlight this note I took with a highlighter or I want to draw a doodle to kind of illustrate something in a note t a note I was taking. Um, uh, that's where I would definitely find benefit from it. Yeah, that's super cool. I have uh, my awesome thing of the week. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, Apple Health is now going to, the new health feature uh, tracks unsafe headphone volumes. And I don't know about you, but I know I tend to listen to things loud on occasion. And it's not because of my age. I do. It's, well, I, if they tracked it in the car, I'd be pretty much in a lot of trouble because I know that I listen to the volume in the car way too loud. But I enjoy it loud. I have the windows down, especially this time of year. But um, they're concerned. There's been a roughly, according to the World Health Organization, roughly half of the people aged 12 to 35 are at risk for hearing loss. And it's a lot of it's because of personal listening devices, because smartphones we didn't, you didn't have your portable videos and music on you as much as you do now, right now. And you are listening to those at various volumes. And a lot of times you listen to them loud, especially maybe if you're trying to block out certain noises around you, or you want to make sure you don't miss something in a movie, you are listening to it quite loudly. So I think this is pretty cool. Um, the headphone, uh, there is a headphone health feature um to you have to opt in to loud headphone volume so it's kind of something to let you know that you're like hitting a level that's particularly too loud um and they'll let you know if it's for a long period of time like if you've been listening at a certain volume for a certain period of time uh they might say hey you need to turn it down a little bit they're trying to save our hearing they're so nice i i, <clears throat> I saw too kind of a building on this feature they're actually allowing you to use the watch to also grab noise level readings around you. Oh, that's super cool. So, and they did it with the audience yesterday. Every, they had everyone like clap and cheer and the decibel rating on the watch went up and warned that you were at an unsafe um, level with the ambient noise around you. So I thought that was pretty neat too. Yeah, that's super cool. And I think because it's, it's, Something that not a lot of people pay attention to, it, like the noises you hear around you, especially like construction or planes or just like day to day activities that just make an awful lot of noise that you don't realize that it's doing damage to your ears over time. All right. We have. Oh, my gosh. Uh, this is this is exciting uh, because I love Missy so much. She has her own awesome thing of the week. What you got, Missy? Well, I'm a huge PC fan. 
as, as we've already figured out. So uh, Dave Podner actually shared this in the group, and it was one of the things that was on my radar this week. Excel for iPhone, there was a recent update that turns photos into editable spreadsheets. What? Yes. So I can take a photo of a spreadsheet or of, of information that I want to put into a spreadsheet, and it will make it editable in a spreadsheet for me in Excel, That's which is super amazing because like I've had clients give me information that they want to put into like a website and they give it to me in an Excel spreadsheet and I can't necessarily copy and paste it over from a, fr- like they'll take a picture of it and send it to me mm-hmm. and I can't copy and paste it over. So I have to then do all of the data entry myself in order to make that happen. The other fun thing that I have is people will ask me, I have a spreadsheet. Can you get it so where it calculates whatever I need to have it calculate? So I can actually go in, take that photo image that they send me from their iPhone. Or I, I'm sorry, on the iPhone. I can take the photo. I can put it in and it will take and read the data, put it into the spreadsheet, and then I can just, instead of having to me tally and put all the information in, I can just tell it what I want it to do at that point. Oh, well, that's super cool. What, and I wanted to test this. I didn't get to test this today at work. I wanted to see, because they, I think Office Lens will do handwriting recognition. My question is, if I'm whiteboarding something and I put it on a table, yes. on a board, will it then take handwriting and whatever I'm working on, like on a on a notepad or wherever and then be able to take that image and put it into the table i think that would be awesome as well yeah i think that would be awesome too i haven't had a chance to play with it yet but i am super super excited about it uh it's it's a game changer as far as i'm concerned with data entry and processing because again i'm not going to have to go through and change all of it now if it's kind of like adobe uh pdf Sometimes it misreads some of the information. So I'm still going to have to go back through and double check that all the information is accurately brought into it. But I think if it's a nice, clear photo, I think that it's going to work just fine. But it's a lot better than rekeying the whole thing, too, if you just oh, have yeah. to, to spot check. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. Like, if I'm going through 400 different entries and I'm scrolling through them just to make sure that the information is correct, it's a lot better than typing out 400 different entries. And I have to admit, Missy and I are very much on the same page with things. We're, we're very much pen and paper, paper planners, paper. We like to write things down before we transfer it over digitally. And this is really nice. Well, and the other thing, I, I was reading about this and they were saying that, so you can use Excel for free without the Office 365 subscription as long as the device is, I think, like 9.7 and less than 10 inches. And I'm pretty sure... You can use this feature without having to pay for Office 365. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool too. That is really cool because, again, it's something easy that's accessible for everybody. And to not have to have that subscription, I think, is is really cool. Um, I mean, most people in a business setting, they're going to be using their iPad or they're going to be using a, you know, their, their PC or their monitor, you know, like a, a regular setup. They're not going to be using their, their phone. But uh, I think students... Mm-hmm. it'll be really helpful for them with like, you know, projects and different things that they're working on too. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. I was super excited to see that in the doc earlier. I was like, this is neat. Technology is cool. Sometimes. <laughs> Speaking of technology, I don't have a clue. I'm new. Um, anyway, uh, it's here at Sidekick Media Services, from sporting events to music video productions to motorcycle rallies, outside (laughs) Uh, production to conferences and everything and everywhere in between the team at sidekick media services has you covered as a sidekick to your superhero project what next big thing can they help you with find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com also from sporting oh that's for missy to type on twitter look at that i'm reading the wrong thing all right so we do have some fan submissions which is super cool uh the first one from our buddy amanda narcissi she has the shh app. You're like, what is this? What does this do? What is this shh app? Well, he's the- a smiling poop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is a fun app. Excrete on the discreet. It, um, it's essentially 
an app to cover all of your embarrassing bathroom noises. <laughs> I love this. So does it play like rain in the back? Like, are you supposed to like play it and play something and turn it up? Yeah, I guess, you know, if you've got that, you know, if you just want to be in the bathroom and don't want people to hear you, um, let's see what the various sounds are. Different bathroom based on the intensity of your movements. (laughs) Join the chocolate starfish workout club and track all of your movements. Oh, this is amazing. At long last, you can relate and let it all out. This is this is amazing. Or relax and let it all out. Sorry. Um, yeah. So do you have problems with people at work making a lot of noises while they use the bathroom? You may want to suggest this app. I, I, I haven't had this problem, but what I find odd at work is some people decide that they need to carry on a phone conversation while they're in the bathroom. I have. I, I, That's I, what I find is odd. Yes, and and you go places, and they're just having full on. Com- I like when they're like on speakerphone or something <laughs> on top of everything else, and it's like that's when you like flush the toilet a couple extra times if you're in another stall, just going, "Hey, how's this conversation going?" But like, do you have do you have bathroom conversations, Jilla? I do not. I am not. I'm not a big talk on the phone person to begin with, and I'm definitely not carrying on phone conversations in the bathroom. I'm not generally a carry on a conversation in the bathroom type of person. Like if I'm on the phone with my mom, generally, so generally, it like- <laughs> occasionally, and okay. usually it's my mother and it's like, I'm running in from somewhere and I just, you know, I really have to go and it's just, it's one of those things, but I do it in the privacy of my own home. I don't use a public restroom and use my phone, but I agree. There have been people who do that and it is the weirdest thing ever because I'm sitting there doing my business and then somebody's having like a business conversation in the stall next to me. Well, it, it's not even that I necessarily feel uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable for them. Like, can you imagine, like, the person on the other side of the call? Like, what are, what are they or aren't they hearing? Like, that's what makes me feel most uncomfortable. It's like, what's the perception of the person on the other side of that call? Yeah. And like I said, I mean, the, the handful of times that I've, you know, been on the phone with my mother, it's been, you know, hey, mom. I have to, I, re- I really have to, I really have to go. So I'm going to put you down on the sink <laughs> on speaker. So real quick. And usually it's a number one, not a number two. So there's like less weird noises, <laughs> but still it's weird. I am totally talk to your family or friends um, in my bathroom at home conversation person. <laughs> you are? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this Parkas is over here. I must be like a press. <laughs> Just at home, though. I don't do it. Just at home, not in public. Yeah. And I'm totally one of those. um, I I do. I like to do conference calls with my Bluetooth or some sort of headphones because I will stick it on mute and run to the bathroom (laughs) (laughs) and still listen to the call, you know, and just like, you have no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) So you accidentally unmute as the toilet flushes. It's fine. I have some very interesting conference calls with the. the haunted house world. <laughs> it's okay. It's, like it's a problem. It's part it's of the fine. haunt. You flush the toilet and all the goblins come out. All the goblins scaring away the goblins or bringing them in. Uh, yeah. So that's us and our bathroom situation. You've learned a lot about us. Welcome to Awesome Cast. Where we talk about our bathrooms and what we do in those bathrooms. And so the next thing we've got is something super cool. Um, you know, I'm a wrestling fan too. Uh, Podner, he's coming with all the stuff today. It is our, our truth is using Apple clips to essentially create some fun videos. And if you can see Mr. Our truth there, and uh, also known as Ron Killings is his rap name. He was with a 24 seven championship belt, uh, wearing a hat and they've got matching sunglasses, but he was using, um, Apple's clips, Apple clips to feature his own promo, which is pretty fun. He's out in the West. <laughs> So if you've ever wanted to shoot your own wrestling level promo, just uh, follow uh, our truth and check out Apple Clips. I think it's pretty awesome. And then we also have from Brian over at the, or hold on one second. I got a message. Uh, things are happening um, over in Facebook. Oh, I am now in Michael Sorg's Facebook, guys. <laughs> this is now the best day ever. Um, yeah, but what we were actually looking at, was <laughs> what we were supposed to be looking at, is we have a 360 video from this is the jackrabbit uh at kennywood park they're doing some things with 360 video which is super cool and we go around not for the faint of heart but you can spin around 
and check out the different views. You can check out the person riding. Uh, you can check out what they're seeing. I hope this isn't making you nauseated watching this at home. This is super fun. I'm wondering what camera they're using because there's like my first check for like this kind of video is the pan all the way down to see like <laughs> what does the rig look like yes. or or do I see like a, a big tripod or the bottom of the camera or is it missing something? I mean, it's almost perfect. We should uh, go talk to our friends over at Kennywood and be like, hey, what camera are you using? This is just it would be interesting to. They should do this for all their rides. I don't know if that's if it's just the Jap grab it that's safe enough, or can we throw this on the new what is it, the steel curtain? Oh yeah, I'm sure we'll see it there. I'm pretty sure everybody's pretty excited about that, and they're going to want every sort of reason to be a part of that. Chilla. Yes. Have you ever played Cuphead? I actually haven't played Cuphead. I don't. I don't even. I don't even know. This is going to be sad. I may own it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. I may have it on the Xbox, but I've actually never played it. Never. I hear. It. I hear it looks. It's. It's a great game, um, but I have personally never played it. But I, I hear there's a new place you can play it. Yeah. Okay. So if you were here last week, we talked about uh, making your own videos. In we had a conversation about the different kinds of videos that you could make in your Tesla. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be the part of the self-driving part of it but uh you can now play cuphead in your tesla model 3 and the model s and the model x cars super cool um if you've ever played cuphead it can be infuriating it's got like a 1930s like fun kind of cartoony look to it um but it's a very challenging game (laughs) if you've never played it yeah Um, like the animation and it reminds me of like an old mickey mouse cartoon yeah like Steamboat Willie. Mm-hmm. It looks like that. Um, but they, they will be, uh, you can play it while you're driving your Tesla now, which is. Or while your Tesla's driving your while Tesla. While your Tesla's driving your Tesla. While you're making your own videos in your Tesla. I was just going to say, weren't we talking about making videos in our Tesla last week? <laughs> yes. I like how you just keep calling them videos. Yes. You know, videos in your Tesla. Uh, yeah, you might as well make some money off those videos and play some video games while you're at it. <laughs> We'll show you how to get the most money out of your Tesla today on Awesome Gas. All right. Um, so, oh, this one's interesting. Uh, we might be losing iTunes. How are you feeling about that, Chilla? So, this is interesting. So, they announced yesterday at WWDC, iTunes is being split apart. So, on Mac OS, iTunes, and they did a really interesting intro. They're like, How far can we take iTunes? Let's add mail into iTunes and let's add a browser into iTunes. (laughs) Um, And they were just showing how over time iTunes has just become the dumping ground for any type of media, whether it be movies, podcasts, um, TV shows, music, etc. So yesterday they announced that on Mac OS Catalina, which will be out in the fall, they will actually be tearing down iTunes. iTunes will be no more. And it will be split into Apple Music, Apple TV, and Apple Podcasts. They're not getting rid of any of the capabilities. They will just be broken up into the respective apps. The interesting thing that they also showed was, um, because iTunes also handles the synchronization of photos and media and everything and backup of your iPhone, or iOS device, um, or now iPad OS device, um, when you plug in one of those devices, it will show up in the, um, oh, what's the bar that comes out from the right? You know what I'm talking oh. about? Like the, the that sidebar <laughs> panel yeah. thing. Um, like your notifications. Yeah, and, like where the notifications and, and everything yeah. and all your widgets are and all that. Your, um, your devices are going to show up there. So I thought that was... I think it's about time because I don't know if you use iTunes a lot, but I have a extremely large music collection. I have curated over probably 25 years um, from CD ripping to Is it legal. Um, so I've been curating it for over 25 <laughs> years. I love it. <laughs> um, and from, you know, CD rips to, old mp3s with horrible bit rates but it's like bootleg copies of music and stuff that you just can't get anywhere Mm -hmm. um so 
my iTunes takes something like a good 45 seconds to load, and I have plugins that load to that can look at music and auto tag it and all kinds of stuff, along with my podcast and my extensive movie library that I've also been curating over time. Um, no Tesla videos in there though. Um, but so I'm actually looking forward to this and, and being able to kind of segregate that content. I'll be interested to see how I can search because sometimes I do just pop open a search to look for mm-hmm. something and I know that iTunes can look at all of that. Um, now I may need to potentially, hopefully the universal search will allow me to search all the libraries, but I, I'm looking forward to it. The one thing that I, I haven't seen a lot of information on, but iTunes will live on on windows. Interesting. So, cause they're, cause they're not going to rewrite the windows application. In fact, they just wrote, rewrote a portion of the windows version of iTunes to make it work in the, the Microsoft store. So I don't see them foresee them changing that anytime soon, but who knows? Here, here's my question. So does this mean that I'm going to have three separate apps? Yes. Okay. So it's, it's like when Facebook decided to split uh, out its messenger and everything else. So I'm going to have my Apple. I, you're, I would almost think of it as you're going to have your Facebook. Yeah. Your messenger, your Instagram, your WeChat, like all those separate apps. Yes. Yeah, so it's all. It's but the podcast app will handle podcasts. It's. I mean, to me, it's not overly complex because they've already been kind of doing music. that. Music. Anyway. I would almost see like the panels that are in there. Yeah. Or it'll. And this is where I'm wondering if they're going because one of the other things they announced was bringing the f- the iOS apps to Mac OS. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. wondering if they're borrowing the theories from iOS, right? Because you have the music app. The podcast app. Yeah. And the TV app. Now they can have single source code. In order to apply it. And then it'll be the same experience across all the devices. Is my thought process behind that it. That kind of makes sense. And Apple is one of those cohesive. They do make it kind of seamless from device to device. Mm-hmm. To the extent that they can. Well, and one of the things that I have in the notes later on is as part of Catalina, and I can't remember now what they called it. Um, Is the wine mixer? The wine mixer. No, (laughs) it's the... um, There's a technology that they're putting in there, and it's what they're using in macOS today to bring news from iOS back to macOS. Okay. And the home app. Like, there's three... And there was news... Home and one other app, I can't remember what it is, that they used to bring the apps from iOS to Mac. They're they're opening that up to all the developers. So, for instance, Twitter has already stated they will be bringing their app back to Mac OS because they got rid of their Mac, they, they got rid of their app out of the App Store. Okay. Um, Twitter will be coming back to the to Mac OS via this technology, and I. I'm sure Podner knows what it's called. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Let's check the chat. Well, I would say while while we're doing that, uh, Katie, if you want to go ahead and read it, roll into our. Well, I wanted next... I wanted to do something real quick. Oh, okay, I do have to thank Riz for the Cuphead story, and okay. uh, we have to thank Brandon for the uh, end of iTunes stories because <laughs> I didn't thank either of them for oh. submitting their stories. So yeah, submit your stories. We you're will such, talk about it. You're such a good host because Sorg sometimes forgets to do that too. Aw. I even introduced Riz. That was nice. I nice. I normally don't do that. Uh, but you know who I like to talk about? Uh, Alex Cars. So Alex Cars Design and Media is putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print in digital projects. Um, but, but I should flip the camera back to myself. Look at that. Uh, Alex can do... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's still chill out. Wait a minute. I control that. Uh, digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Check out alancars.media to get started. He did some really good stuff. You should probably check that out if you haven't done so already. All right, let's talk about other fun stories. Uh, I, I thought this was pretty cool. We're going to start with one of, of Sorg's stories. The They are going to... NASA made their entire media catalog, media library, publicly accessible and copyright free, which is really, if you're into anything space or just, honestly, just cool science stuff, 
these images are phenomenal and just being able to look at them and search through them and just seeing just all the amazing things that happen, you know, with our own planet and throughout the galaxy is just, these are just gorgeous photos. Have you checked this out yet, Chilla? I have not. I'm responding to Dave Podner. Oh, good. He's talking I'm to us. I'm sorry. No, no, you can. No, no, no. I'll keep talking. It's fine. <laughs> you, you can talk to Podner. Yeah, I was looking at this though, Katie, and I agree. This is absolutely amazing. Um, just visually, the images that they have on there. Those are pretty. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Like they're absolutely beautiful, beautiful images. And it's something that with everything going on with the state of science yes. these days, I think that having this publicly accessible and copyright free is literally putting it into the hands of anybody who's interested in learning about it and using it. And I think that it's really a cool opportunity for people to look at and learn more about what NASA has been doing for starters mm -hmm. and kind of get people more interested in what NASA does and with space exploration and just learning about science in general. Uh, so I, I think that that's really a cool opportunity for everybody. You just sit and look at these for hours. They're just yeah, so that's pretty much what I did earlier when I, I saw the link and there was like, ooh, the pretty. pretty. Ooh, someone pretty. someone needs to make like a screensaver for your PC, ooh. Mac, etc. that just lets you feed through these as, as like you're well, just rotating. Here's here's the fun thing. Um, when Sorg got his, his MacBook a few years ago, he got to have the coolest photos as his backdrop because it was... It was the it, it was the images from space that were, were automatically loaded on his computer. Mm -hmm. So it was like the Milky Way. It was a few other things. Like it was just like really cool stuff. There was um you know some moonshots and different things like that. I was so enamored with those photos that I went in and I downloaded them to a thumb drive so I could put them on my PC mm -hmm. because I wanted them. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't need to do that. They're they're just there. I can I can go to NASA's. And for NASA's library and I can go ahead and look and I can create a nice little screensaver and have space, the final frontier at my desktop. So fancy. And then, okay. So this is, this is definitely a Chilla thing here. Um, I don't know if you've seen this one Chilla, but this guy used toys and pr camera perspectives to make amazing photos with his tiny superheroes. Well, and it's tiny superheroes with him and his family, which I thought was awesome. I have seen this and there's a, there's like, it's, I don't know if it's a second part to this. Cause I've seen other photos this guy has done, but it's like, he's telling the Hulk to take out the garbage. His kid is punching, um, Deadpool across <laughs> the room. Um, he's telling Hulk to move furniture around. Um, it is super adorable. And the, the one I saw, actually, the article I saw showed how he did each individual shot, um, which I thought was pretty cool. And I think in the article here, which one is it? There's there's a photo in here that actually shows you. Oh, it's, the, the, it's the first one, how he sets up yeah. the shot. Yeah, with him in the, the broom and then Superman, Batman and Hulk. Um I want to know what this guy's investment in his action figure collection is. Cause those all look like sideshow toys, mm -hmm. um, figures and those figures usually run 450 bucks a pop. Wow. Um, but the, the photos are phenomenal and it looks like he's just using his phone. And I don't know if there's a remote shutter on there or if he just has it on a timer, but it looks perfect. And like the group shots where you just kind of put his family in the middle of the whole mm -hmm. game. That's so cool. Well, I think something for Chilla to do. And I appreciate the ones that show what it is in reality versus the forced perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see like him standing in the background, obviously towering over these toys. But then when you do the shot from the ground, essentially where the camera is, it looks like they're the same size. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. And I, I wonder too, like like I said, like you're saying, I wish he did more of those where it shows without the perspective, because I'd be interested, like some of the ones that have 
it looks like garbage or something along the road. Like, how big are those objects in real life? Are they like this big that he kind of sprinkled there? Or are those something that's around him? Like, it's just phenomenal. Oh, Podner suggests that he used maybe a watch in a room as his remote ah. viewer and shutter. Oh, viewer and shutter. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, because I know that I've done some stuff with that with my watch and my phone in order to get it situated too. But yeah, that's that's really, really clever, as, <laughs> as the title says. Um, where was that from? My, my Modern Met? That was, that particular one, I think, was from. Yeah, My Modern Met. Yeah. They have some really cool stuff over there in general, but yeah, this this is super fun. I now kind of want to do that with some of the th- with some of the toys here in the studio <laughs> while Sorg is away. Some of the wrestlers, yes, we got we got enough wrestlers in here. We could have them doing all kinds of things. That's just it. We we need to get Ronnie in studio tonight so that way we can take some perspective shots with him with some of the wrestling people that we have in here. Oh, that would be so cool. Yes, the meat and some pizza from Slice on Broadway. Ooh, let's just talk about Slice on Broadway real quick because we have not talked about Slice on Broadway because we they're wonderful. They give um, some all this tech talk can make you make us hungry. So we're so glad we have the pe- perfect pepperoni pizza from Slice PGH Slice to get us through podcast day. Stop by your local Slice location and tell them we sent you. Uh, visit sliceonbroadway.com. Hashtag get your slice on. Yeah. So if you've had any slice, you have to do it. And it's definitely the pirate season is in full swing. Uh, that you can have some pizza and watch baseball. It's very cool. Um, I guess when Sorg stopped down there before he left town, they got into a really great conversation about some of the stuff that we're doing down here at the studio too. So Aww. like, it's nice that they're completely involved in the community in addition to all the stuff that they're doing in all the cool locations where they are. So yeah, definitely swing by some of the best pie in town. It's true. I, I definitely stopped by the, the, the one right here in Beachview. Um, the one that's in, have you guys been to the one in PNC Park? Yes. yes. Is it, can you go into it or is it just like a walk up window type thing on the, like how, like what's that set up? You can actually walk into it. And, and go, there's their seating? Yeah, there's seating. Oh, perfect. Yep. Okay, cool. And then just kind of depending on whether there's an actual pirate game going on or not, it depends on how much, like if you have to go in through the entrance to the, you know, if you're going back into the baseball game, um, that way. Cool. But yeah. So I've actually, I've had uh, a few moments where I've had uh, taken my zombie down there when we've been on outings <laughs> to slice on Broadway because they're always excited to see our zombies. So I appreciate it. And then Sheila, what would you, uh, oh, wait, I just, I was excited about this thing because I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, on iOS 13, you can switch between Wi-Fi networks at the control center. Yeah. So um, if you typically swipe, down from the right side of your iPhone 10 or newer. And I'm trying to remember, I think it's just swipe down in general um, on an older device. You kind of get the screen that has like your volume bar and your brightness bar and all of that of what they, um, uh-oh. Um, of what they, sorry, hold on one second. I'm having home technical difficulties. My kid is demanding that he get (laughs) an iPhone app and I have to approve it. (laughs) But um, so what you do is you swipe down and you get like in the upper left, you get like the little um, airplane, the uh, network, cellular network, the Bluetooth and the uh, Wi-Fi. Normally you would tap to turn those on and off. Um, what you can do is you can tap and hold and it'll actually bring up all of the Wi-Fi sites around you and show the one that you're connected to at the top. Um, same for Bluetooth. You can actually see what you're connected to on Bluetooth. You can tap to disconnect or you can tap other ones to connect. Oh, so I cool. thought that was pretty darn cool. Can I tell you how excited I am about this? <laughs> it's so much nicer than having to go like find the settings app, go into settings, go to Bluetooth. Like, Well, and that's just it because um, our car has Bluetooth connectivity for the radio Mm -hmm. so that we can stream our our music or whatever from our phones. And Sorg's phone is set to default and mine will disconnect if he's in the car with me. So I have to physically go through everything, reconnect on my phone to the device and then go through like the buttons on the device in order to get it there. 
But if I do the buttons first on the car mm -hmm. before I do, it doesn't connect and then it doesn't want to connect. Mm -hmm. And it like throws my phone into this weird like loop where it won't connect to it. So this is super, super <laughs> handy because now instead of having to go, like you said, into the settings, into the Wi-Fi, into the or into the connected devices, into the Bluetooth, I can just boom, boom, boom. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm surprised they haven't come up with this sooner, but I'm sure they, their developers are working around the clock to bring us all kinds of fun stuff. So hope finally we've gotten this. So I, yes. I'm personally excited for it. And then this new thing that Chilla is going to be saving up all his money for, the all-new redesigned MacBook Pro starting at $5,999. It's not the MacBook Pro. It's just the, the MacBook Mac Pro. That's right. And I've been reading articles. I think this is... Sorg's going to be able to come back and do this probably more justice than we can mm -hmm. because it's definitely aimed at video and media professionals. Um. I've heard, and it'll be interesting to see what they actually, I, don't, I haven't seen anything direct from Apple. I've heard that if you go full tilt on this with the display and everything, you could be looking at like 35 to yeah. 40 grand for, for these. And, and they're, I mean, they're coming with multiple high-end graphics cards, um, it's like two graphics cards on one card and you can put two of those cards in there. They're doing, they have their afterburner card, which is doing additional um, media decryption on the fly. So you can do multiple 8K streams um, without having to have it render. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to see Sorg with one of these strapped to his back. Yeah, um, Sorg and has a rack already... of them behind him. Sorg has already, when he shared this into the, into the group, he, uh, made the comment onto it. They have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing he was, is he was looking at the MacBook pro that he just got. <laughs> and he's like, I totally could have gotten that instead if I had waited, but this the, isn't coming out till the fall. Yeah. Well, so and that's the thing is he, a long time. he didn't want to wait until fall. Plus he needs something that's a little more mobile. Mm -hmm. to take with him, especially when he's traveling like he is now for, you know, SAE stuff, that he needs to be able to have the accessibility to, to work in the field. This has wheels. Oh, it has wheels, but he, <laughs> he needs to get it on an airplane. Yes. <laughs> well, it can move. It's, I, I'm probably going to misquote the, because I, I watched this portion of the announcement. It pulls 320 square feet of air through it per minute or something. Something ridiculous, like... That's what it's pulling through to cool it. Um, they created their own kind of vent system. Um, it is rack mountable, not just for like a server room. So you could have a whole room of these things. Um, pretty amazing technology. I, something I a can't afford and B wouldn't be able to utilize appropriately well and the fun thing is podner's mentioning in here the monitor with matte finish and stand is only seven thousand dollars that's it i mean we'll get two so you're looking you're looking at a twelve thousand dollar system if you just get the base so if you are part of the patreon at the seven thousand dollar <laughs> level we will be happy to buy this monitor yeah yes well i love the. i'm like i'm looking at it and going this is the fanciest cheese grater i've ever seen like it's like it looks like a giant cheese grater. Go, go ahead and pull up the picture of that again. And, and they referred yeah, to they they referred to it as like their custom lattice, like almost like a like a lattice fence, mm -hmm. but it's like a custom lattice. So I'm is that what helps icon. with the airflow on it, or is it just to make mm -hmm. it pretty? That's what that's it's supposed to help with the airflow, along with the three fan. Like there's three fans built onto the one side of the panel to help pull air in. And then I can't remember what the watt, like it's some ridiculous wattage too on the power supply and everything else. <laughs> Podner's chiming in, unless you're Pixar, you can't fully use this. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, I mean, that those were the names up there, right? Like yeah. they've partnered with black magic. They've partnered with Pixar. They've, they've partnered with, Big name studios and big name hardware and software developers. And that's the thing. Like Sorg somewhere is being like, I will absolutely test the limits of this thing <laughs> with my video projects. Bring it on. 
So Apple, if you're listening, feel free to send us a couple demo units. Yes. <laughs> That'd be really nice of them. All right, Chilla. How many apps are we going to have, Apple apps, are we going to have by the end of the year? Well, and so that's what we were talking about earlier. And we figured out that the thing is called Project Catalyst, which is like Marzipan, the, the next rev of Marzipan that they announced. Um, so anybody that's building iOS apps is going to be able to easily port them to Mac. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think I put it in the show notes, but we're going to secretly pick up mouse support mm -hmm. on iPads as well. Um, so I think that's another lending itself to to and from of apps from Mac OS to iOS and vice versa. But we've already heard Twitter and a couple others yesterday announce they're bringing their, their apps back to Mac OS because of how easy it is to port. I think Asphalt, the race car game, mm -hmm. said they ported their game in a day. Twitter said they did it in less than a week, I think it was. Um I may not have those times exact, so don't quote me. Go look it up. But I, I have a feeling that there's going to be a multitude of apps we see show up on Mac OS. What I'm also interested in seeing is for the pay apps, please, Apple, can you make it where I can buy it once and I don't have to pay for it in both places? Because there are some apps that I have purchased the iOS version and the Mac OS version, because I use it on both. Um, but in some cases I can go buy, just like I can buy an iPhone app and it works on my iPad. I, I want to be able to purchase the application once and be able to use it on both. I don't know if we'll see that this year, but hopefully they'll be working on that as well. Well, they kind of did that when the iPads came out too, because you would have to, if, if you had the iPhone version, you still had to get the, the version for the iPad. Yeah. But like a couple of years, like a year or so in, they started releasing, if you have it on the iPhone, they would let you get the. Yeah. And I don't know. So there's ways. I don't think that always works for Apple TV right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping they, they, they solve that for both. Cause I think the channels app I have for, I had for iOS, but you had to buy it for Apple TV. There's something weird where something it's weird like, with it. yeah. Um, so I'm hoping they make it where I can buy once and run across everything. That is one of the handy things about uh, you know Microsoft is if I get it on my computer, I can put it across my my Microsoft devices pretty easily. But that doesn't always hold true for Xbox. Well, that's true. So like Overwatch, but there are some games that are play anywhere that I can mm -hmm. play. I can buy once. Like the uh, Marvel versus Capcom. Yeah, that's the, that's bought, the one that I was thinking. It was easy to. I bought that one, and that I bought it on the Xbox, and I can play it on my PC, and mm -hmm. it's the same. But like Overwatch, you have to buy it on the PC separately from buying it on the Xbox. So it's up to the developer. I was gonna too. say it sounds like it's a developer thing then. Yeah. But we shall see, I guess. All right, so we're going to go into our last story, and because it's me and I'm hosting the show, it's a Pornhub story. <laughs> you own the reins. You own the controls. I can talk about whatever I want. I made sure it's a safe uh, link, so you're welcome, Sorg, uh, so we can, you know, show it. It's not like it. he has to click on it. I know. I can totally just click on anything I want. Um, but, you know, we are one of the big things with Pornhub that I'm a super huge fan is I'm a big, giant numbers nerd. Um, and Pornhub will give you any sort of numbers you could ever possibly imagine, ever. Uh, so right now, the one of the latest uh, infographics, which I love infographics, and I love that this is a Pornhub story, by the way, with a UNICEF ad on the side, on the Forbes <laughs> site. That's great. <laughs> Are you trying to guilt me into donating? Mine's a MailChimp ad and oh. State Farm. Oh, I've got Verizon and UNICEF. That's so funny. But Pornhub has released the top 20 cities to show you, like, the top cities checking out um, on Pornhub and the U S had the most, I believe. And cause that's kind of what we have to do. Uh, number one was New York city. Uh, Los Angeles was number four. Chicago was five. Uh, you had Houston at nine and uh, Dallas at 13 and uh, DC at 17 and followed by tw Atlanta was at 20, but it gives you a rundown essentially of the top categories and uh, relative categories. And they tell you, you know, the percentage of uh, females checking in, the amount of time that they're spending on the particular Pornhub sites, 
and also just how much how many people are on mobile and it's all for all these i, I think they're all over 70 some percent i was i'm surprised that the mobile numbers are so high mm-hmm. what's the and uh, and so they have the top categories what's the relative category is that like the a, a subset of the top category yeah it looks to be um kind of like just you have your main, your top five things they're looking up and then like the kind of a difference like versus like, I don't know. it's interesting. A lot of them seem to be very much um, ethnic mm-hmm. trends. And then you have some that are obviously not <laughs> that are more like uh, physical uh, attributes, attributes, but yeah. So it's interesting in, in Bangkok, Thailand, the top category is popular with women mm-hmm. with the relative category popular with women. So there's a, seems to be a handful of ladies that are, um, especially in yeah, Italians really must like themselves. The number one <laughs> top category in Italy is Italian. Well, the same with the French in France. They're like number one category, French. <laughs> what do you put down like when you're in Atlanta or like, or like in Dallas, Texans <laughs> or America? I don't know. But yeah, so it's just interesting to see um, is that every, yeah, it's mostly mobile. That's, that's pretty much the wild part. Is and, People in South Korea care more about the ethnicity mm-hmm. than the category because theirs is flipped. Oh. At least for the top two. <laughs> but yeah, so if you've ever, like I said, check out Pornhub if you're really into, if, if you can, and you won't get in trouble at your particular place of work or with your significant other or whatever because I don't want to get anybody in trouble at this point. Uh, they have uh, some just amazing statistics. And coming from it from a marketer's point of, point of view, if people are on Pornhub on mobile, they're checking your stuff out on mobile. Like, do you know what I mean? Like how many times we have to say you have to be optimized for mobile because everybody is mobile. Well, Google now, and I think it's even on the desktop, Google prioritizes people that have properly formatted their sites for mobile. Mm -hmm. It will also increase their rank on the desktop searches. So it's, it's, it's critical in today's day and age I think in some of these other countries, I'm guessing mobile is easily overtaking by by multipliers the number of people with mobile versus the number of people with PCs. I feel like growing up, like you started to see in the homes where you know you had multiple computers, the the price of computers fell enough that you could get more than one, and they were it was almost getting to the point of one per person instead of everyone having to share the home computer. Now everyone's gone back to one home computer, but a multitude of mobile devices. It's so weird. I mean, it's, it's just so neat to see, like we've been able to see this shift mm-hmm. in technology of just, you know, we had the one computer, you had the one phone line, you had the <laughs> one, <laughs> and now you can get away with anything because you have everything in your pocket. And this little guy. All wireless. And Steve wants to do his part to get Pittsburgh on the list next year. I think we can all band together and work on that. Definitely help. I would, I would love to see the search results. I would love to see the interests in the top categories for Pittsburgh. Would it be like fries on top or (laughs) (laughs) parking chairs? Like I can see us being very Yinzer centric. Rubber band, gum band. band. (laughs) You have like the gum band people and you have the rubber band people and they're just differently, definitely looking up different things. Oh my gosh. I just, or any sort of combination of any Kennywood ride, uh, you could imagine. Yeah. The Jackrabbit. <laughs> it's like the Thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> the Steel Curtain is the S&M sites. <laughs> See, we could do this. We could, we could do a Yinzer only uh, Pornhub page. We could do, a, you know, I, I think we could totally do this, Chilla. I think this would be the thing we'll work on while Sorg's gone. Oh, definitely. De- <laughs> I've already got the domain Yin's Hub. Yin's Hub. <laughs> Yin's Hub. I'm telling you, put the fries on top. <laughs> and there's the show title. Put the, put fries, the fries on, on top. top. Well, I do want to say thank you to our friends, uh, Dave Podner, Steve, and who else was in here? I saw Scott McTaggart was in here. Uh, who else popped their head in? A few people popped their head in to say hi and to notice that we off Sorg and I've taken over the show now until forever, at least till he gets back. And Missy Sorg was in there too, and Mama Sorg was in there, so... Lucy and Mama Sorg. But She's that- probably nervous now. She's like, where did my boy go? <laughs> He's fine. Wink, wink. <laughs> but 
Thank you so much for tuning in to on the Facebook and participating live. And definitely send us our your stories for our next show because we do like to read your stories and do like to shout out to people. And we do say, see, I'm, I'm a good host and tell people thank you and stuff. But we do record live Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Follow AwesomeCast on Twitter and Facebook. And email your thoughts and stories to awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or Stitcher and all the places and that is it thank you so much for tuning into this week oh wait i gotta thank chilla chilla i love you chilla um, oh thank, thank you. you i love you too missy you'll get your retire in a moment Turn your <laughs> <mic off. laughs> chilla thank you so much um what are you up to now um i'm not up to much um i i'm hoping when maybe when sword comes back we can do a tour of my house i just finished my basement yes. um so you can say things like Hey, mm -hmm, it's movie time and like the perimeter, like I have backlighting to the mm -hmm. TV and it's 4K. Um, the backlighting of the TV comes, the room dims to 50%. Um, all <laughs> kinds of fun stuff like that. So I'm happy to have finished that major project. Um, but you can find me at Chilla on the Twitter, John Chilla on the Facebook, and I think Chilla Photo on the Instagrams. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for, you. Thanks for being here. I like working with Chilla. He's my buddy. And then uh, back in the corner where we keep her <laughs> away from the rest of us, uh, Missy Sorg. Hi, producer Missy. Hi. So what are you up to? I'm, I'm super happy that you've acknowledged me. <laughs> Sorg always forgets me. He never gives me a microphone. It's the worst thing ever. Um, so we're working on some really fun stuff. Uh, Pittsburgh or PGH Museums is, is going to be coming to light here in the, the next few months. So if you get a chance to follow them, check out what they're doing. Uh, they've got a website. It's pghmuseums.org. And PGH Museums on all of the socials, so Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I think he has a Snapchat over there, too. Uh, essentially, we're going to be putting together an aggregate site for Western Pennsylvania Museum information for everybody to check out. And there are a lot more than you realize. Oh, well, I yeah. know you don't realize it, but there's way more than just the Carnegie's. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Uh, the Baranoff Museum is, is one of the ones that I'm learning a lot about. It's, it's a really cool, quaint little place, I guess, mm -hmm. that's kind of off the beaten path that some of the guys in the groups just go on about how amazing it is. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't get quite as much light, uh, as, as some of the larger museums. So Very that's, cool. that's a fun thing. What's, and what, how are, how are they deciding which ones get involved? Is it just up to them to, we, or we are, are pulling you... together a list. So we have <laughs> street teams that are going out into like Westmoreland County. Somebody's assigned to Westmoreland County. Someone's assigned to like Northern Allegheny County, Southern Allegheny County. Um, so kind of by county, by area, we have volunteers who are going through and putting information together. And we're reaching out to some of the museums to see about working together with the museums. So mm. the the goal is we would like to do like a membership card hmm. that gives you benefits at each of the, the locations. Um, so that's still kind of in works for everything. But uh, my portion of it is I'm helping put together the, the website and some of the social. Very cool. Cool. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun little project. Yay. Well, that's super cool. Missy, yeah. Are you on social media? Yes, uh, I'm at Rebellious Flaw on, on Twitter, and you can find me under Missy Sorg on Facebook and all that fun jazz. Or you can just check out the business stuff because I never tweet or post mm -hmm. on my own stuff. It's always the business stuff with uh, Sidekick Media Services and right now <laughs> all of the wrestling companies. Yay, that's <laughs> so cool. Well, I'm... Getting, it's getting dark. I like I went back and looked at the feed and like, it's getting dark in here. It is. Everywhere. So Dutters, where can people find you? Oh, I'm everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm everywhere. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, K Dutters, or you can find me on Instagram, Kate Marie PGH in other places like Facebook, of course. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, starting all the spooky stuff already. Uh, so that's it. I got stuff going on and uh, I get to host shows on occasion like this one. Maybe I'll be back. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Awesome Cast. You've been our awesome audience. I hope you guys have an awesome week. And maybe Sorg will be back. Bye.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.